And we're live right now. Totally did not mean to hit the enter button, but I did. So let's let's do this. Coaches, how are you doing? Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. You were uh you had a good meal, you washed your hands, you uh do not have the coronavirus going on. How how are things what have you heard down in Florida? Are they are they starting in June, July? Are they not starting at all? Are they pulling to California? What's going on? I don't know, man, because I'm not really in that world right now. We're in the process of opening up. So, I mean, they've already started. I mean, we're in I think, phase two. So we had a oh, curfew. Wow. It's been lifted. Um, you can get your hair cut. Uh, I think you can go to restaurants in 25% capacity if it's outdoor. And so we're, we're all systems go. Okay. All right. We're in South Carolina. We just hit up the uh, phase one and we're going into phase two. I've heard that we may be starting toward the end of June, first of July. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know, man. Fingers crossed. It's wild. So what, what do you think is going to happen in California? I know you, I know you heard they shut down those, all the colleges and everything, or they're not having fall. Like, I know you have buddies over there. I don't know, man. Uh, it's, I really don't know. I, I, I mean, nobody knows. Nobody knows anything. So. Yeah. yeah. It's tough because it's one of these things and, you know, San Francisco. So I used to live south of San Francisco for years. And, you know, San Francisco was the first mayor. London Breed was one of the first people in the country to lock everybody down. And, you know, came under a lot of criticism. This is over. This is, you know, overdoing it, blah, blah, blah. But look at their numbers compared to New York. And, you know, it's one of those deals that you can't go and open everything up and then see all the deaths and then come back. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I mean, let's let's go back and do that. I mean, you've seen in Texas, the numbers are spiking already. A couple of weeks. I don't know. It's tough because I get... I get both sides. I know why people want to open things up. I know why people want to close things down. And I just I'm want just, to be yeah. safe. I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. No, hell no. Yeah. I'm not that smart. No. People are like, listen, if I had all the answers, if I had those answers, I'd be getting paid way more money than I get paid right now. <laughs> so. All right. Well, coaches, uh, welcome so much. Thank you for being here. I'm with the great and talented and beautiful coach, Chris Vass. How are you doing, sir? Things. Yes, yes. I'm it good. Is. Uh, I, I'm doing well. I uh, just trying to survive this craziness. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. And what we're going to talk about is we are going to talk about first uh, defensive game planning. What are some simple things we can do to get in a defensive game plan? Uh, I want to talk about how you go about installing things just a little bit. You don't have to give us everything. And then if you have any questions, go ahead, put them in chat. We will answer any and every question that you have. And we have some coaches already. Coach Flynn, how you doing, sir? You doing okay? Coach Jones, how you doing? From Camden. That's right. That's my hometown. How, no, I'm a noob on this. How can I see? If you go to my channel, I will I will drop it in, in the uh, Zoom chat. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, is this something that can be broadcast out to uh, make sure I post this on? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fixing to tag him. I'm letting everybody know. Okay. All right. I'll put, I'll put it up on Twitter too. Yes, sir. Let's get some coaches in here and talk some ball. Yo, <laughs> great show cast, right? I didn't here. know if this was going to be live or anything. So I would, or I would have. Oh, it's fine, man. It's fine. Coach Grant, how you doing from California? Y'all doing all right down there? Hope everything's okay. All right. So when you get done with that, let me know, because I I am curious on the defensive side. When I was on defense, I I don't know if you knew this. I got my start on the defensive side. I was a linebacker coach. I didn't know that. Yep. I played linebacker in high school and in college, middle linebacker. Um, all I would do when I was breaking down film is I was just looking at what the guards were doing. Cause that's really the only thing they gave me to do is like, Hey, what are the guards doing? Because that nine times out of 10 in high school football, that's what teams run behind are the guards. I have yet to see a wing T team influence block. 
did y'all get that much in California? Did y'all play wing team team? We saw, yeah, like we, in Northern California in the Bay Area is very, that's a little bit behind the time schematically. And that doesn't mean, that's not good or bad. It's just, you know, and there's some very good teams that have won a lot of games, but they're, you know, very, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a nice way to say it, but it just, I mean, the four teams that we had to beat for my five years at Sarah, the four teams that we really had to beat was double wing, wing T, but they were power series, not buck. So it was mm-hmm. power belly, um, an I formation, like 1972 USC version <laughs> team. And the fourth team would uh, for a while was wing T option. Some of the air force stuff, but not double slot. They did it a lot of 10 personnel looks and 20, like two backs and like near and far side. It was different. So we had to defend that stuff first. And so, you know, when I first got to Sarah, everybody was like, oh, four, two, five, that's not going to work, you know, but the four, four will work. I'm like, okay, well, it's semantics. What do you call those guys? <laughs> we actually saw Mike Machado, uh, who's the head coach at, San, at uh, San Jose's Valley Christian. They ran a lot of tackle trap and they were, they'll tackle trap you till you, till they can't anymore. So, um, I mean, they were tackle trapping a G in a shade. They would, oh, wow. infill. and so they would, they would set and fan, set and fan. And so it was hard because when we played those teams, we had to tell, we used the Pat Fox D line rules. So if my target shows, I strike and get my hips in the gap. If my target disappears, I bend inside. Disappear meaning crossing the tail of the center to go across and going out. And then we'd see a pin pull team and then we're trying to get back outside across face and they would disappear, you know, trying to get those guys instead of diving down inside. So there was a lot of that, but yeah, we, we saw, we saw a lot of tackle trap, a lot of that stuff. So we actually, and it was funny because it worked out. I used Pat Fox's linebacker reads, which is guard tackle bubble to near back. Now that's easy when you're playing a 30 technique, but when you're playing a 10, it's a little harder. And so we kind of had to modify that as the years went on because we used to play robber coverage. So we were, you know, a 10 and a 40 I or two thirties and we had the free safety in the middle. What we started doing was we started playing like an under front Sam that spilled out of an over front. So we had three, six, nine that spilled. And then because of that, we had to balance the backers weeks. So it was a little tougher. Now I know I'm, I'm kind of going a little bit all over the place, but we had to key the tackles and we had to have separate calls because when our guards would pull, we would yell, pull, pull, pull. If they pulled across the tail of the center and mm-hmm. then it, it told the other guy to run off tackle. Well, if you make a pull call when the tackle pulls, you know, the tackle trap, they're trying to cut you in half. And so you're telling your linebacker, if you say pull, 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 you're telling them to run outside. So you're screwing them. So we had to make T calls. We'd go TTT and we basically would tell the linebacker to run straight ahead rather than run outside so it was all sorts and we would have like okay this is valley christian time you know you'd have different things and so we had to be super disciplined that's why like it makes me nervous with all this new age defense where they're like just tempo the back billy just just follow the running back like that shit makes me nervous and i know it works i mean it's all the big teams are doing it but i've had so much two back run game jammed down my throat for years and years, I have a nervous time and just hang out until he declares. And then you just, you just go follow him. Like <laughs> what? Like I, I, it's taken me a lot to break out of that. Okay. So. Now I, I'm going to be honest, coach. We've already got questions because you were the defensive guru. So we're just going to jump right into it. We'll, we'll circle back uh, to how you game plan, because this actually has one of them. Um, this is from uh, coach Josh. He says, hope all you're doing well. I would love to hear about how many blitzes you go into a game plan with. Do you game plan formations or something different? Um, these quite, we have none. So we use the TCU system. And so it's all, we don't one word anything. So we can carry four to five times as many blitzes as everybody else because there's no memorization. So here's a good example. So if let's just say you're in double threes, double fives or sixes, whatever, and you're blitzing the backers and the A-gaps, just an old school double barrel, double A-gap blitz, 
Well, for most teams, if you're going to play cover zero, that would be like blaze or but I'll, I'll use the word. I've heard you heard the word ammo used, right? Yeah. Cover zero. Well, in a TCU world, you would call that outlaw, which is double threes, bullets A, meaning you're blitzing the A's. And then you tag the end what to do, you know, the back flares, you got them. Because if you're playing cover zero and the free safety has the back and he flares, he's not going to be able to get there. So that would be outlaw, bullets, a silver. So that's one blitz. And then the coverage would be bullets zero, right? Well, if we want to turn that into a man free pressure, we add the word scratch, which tells the D tackles, you have the back if he steps up. The ends already have the back if he flares because we've already attached that silver call. And now we tell the secondary, you're actually playing cover one or man free or zero. We call it zero free. When well, somebody else's world that you have to call it something else. You'd have to call it, you know, ammo. You call that blaze. So you have to one word and everybody have to memorize. Now you can do something where you can assign the back to the, the DN to the back has the back and then the DN away can just go. We would call that gold because you silver is if you have them, if you flare is gold is you have them to your side, no matter what. Then we did the Aranda stuff, what we call double gold. So the, the back, the end to the back would take the back, the end away would drop as a rat in the hole. So you've taken one blitz path and you can run cover three behind it. You could call double drop three sky or, or yeah, three sky, the three Bronco, that would be the TC version. So I've taken one blitz with five different coverage patterns um where those guys are rushing you're rushing six and then the the less guys you blitz now those three uh, those threes four eyes are working to contain and you're only rushing four and all i've done is like tagged it like an offense but i've kept the same structure outlaw bullet say and then i just changed the coverage most people couldn't carry we could carry we could carry all of those calls into a game it doesn't mean we will but because they're tags and because all of that stuff I just told you is learned in the first three days of our install, we're able to carry an unlimited amount. And it's really not just what, it's really not just like we want to carry 97 calls. It's two things. It's you can drill down to what they do instead of like, well, this is the best blitz we have for what they do. You can customize like that one concept. You know, if the back doesn't, go out for passes or he doesn't get screens, then we'll play the scratch game and we'll have the tackles bull and spy the back, let everybody rush and go. If it's Adrian Peterson back there, you want the end to take the back, no matter what, no matter where he goes, because you don't want him on a defensive tackle if they're running option routes. So now you say gold instead of silver. You know what I mean? And so you just, and, and, and so it's not that you're going to carry all six of those blitzes, but you're able to customize every week what you want and really drill down to an offense instead of being like, well, this is in our package and this is the best of what we got. Now that's the long way of saying, you know, it's, it's so game plan having and customizable. And that I think people, when they see the TCU system and they see, they think like, oh, well, we don't need all this stuff. Like, why do you need to do all this stuff? You have too much. It's not that it's, I'm able to customize to what a team does with hardly any new teaching. And so to be honest with you, I can't answer that question like, because we're able and in game, we're able to make adjustments where, you know, you all of a sudden they start releasing the back. Like we played a team that they never released the back. One of our linebackers was terrible and they felt like they worked on a game plan. Like we're going to get one-on-one -on -one in the back. Well, now we had to change, you know, I'm yelling like bullets too. And we didn't have any game plan, but I'm yelling gold instead of silver or whatever we can tag it and it now it changes the blitzes where if you're in a traditional defense, I don't know how you do that. Like for example, Saban has that same blitz. Mm -hmm. It's different when it's man free. It's, he has a version where it's two trapped or two by two and, and a roll cover three to three by one. It's totally different words, but it's the same blitz path. Now, why does he do, do that? that? Do you, do you that? know why he does that? Why? Does... Well, Nick Saban's, uh, I, I know you're uh, trying. You're trying to guess what Saban. No, no, no. I know why. I, I, oh, okay. Somebody that okay. was. I'll say I was friends with one of the coordinators there, and 
he said that, and I and don't quote me on this. These were his words that like only is it four percent of people memorize everything. Uh-huh. Like they don't associate; they just memorize. And Saban's like that. And so he would pitch ideas to Saban, and Saban like, oh, we'll call this apples and oranges. And he's like, this doesn't make any. Sorry, I don't want to curse. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to that. Okay. That's why their blitz shit like uh, it, it's makes no sense, and their coverage stuff. Like they have a coverage Illini, 75 cut triple clip. It's the only coverage that where the first number is the weak side of the coverage and the second number is the strong side. For no reason. For no reason at all. Because he's <laughs> the guy that learns through memorization. So I don't I know I went and and went on a tangent, but that's really the truth with that stuff. Like there's not. I don't have a number or hard stop. Like, oh, we can't, we can't have more than ten pressure calls, or we need ten pressure calls. All right, so, so. let's let's simplify this a little bit. You come in, uh, you you are now consulting on defense, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, I suck on defense. I'm the head coach. I'm also the defensive coordinator. I'm struggling. I call you. We're playing. Let's say a spread team. Mm-hmm. I need you to help me out. What are just just give me three pointers? Like, what can I do game plan wise to help me stop this team for like seven? Cause them. Are you talking specifics or like the process of how I game plan? Just the the process. Like, what what are you going in? What what's the brilliant mind of Coach Vass doing when he comes in and he looks at this team and he's like, uh, "This is what I'm going to do." I'll tell you what I do. So the first thing I try and do is I watch. I, I never do this. It, it's one of those things that early in the year, it's great. And then week four and five, when I get more tape or film, whatever you want to call it, it goes by the wayside. Um, I like to watch the game straight through, taking minimal notes, just b- watching the flow. Because what I found is when you go to cut-ups too quickly, you, you, lose, you lose a feel for the offense. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to tag. Um, and from there, what I'm going to try and do is um, I'm going to, the, the thing I want to know the most, and I know this is again, very different. We game plan personnel groups holistically. What do you mean by that? I don't look it down a distance until Tuesday night. Wow. I don't care because if I look at personnel, because personnel is going to tell you more than down a distance. And why is that? Like, it depends. I mean, it also depends on the offense. If you're seeing a team like a run and shoot team that is 10 personnel and 10 personnel only, mm-hmm. that's different. But for the most part, if you're a three, four personnel grouping, three to four offensive personnel groups, you're going to have a one that you do in the goal line of the red zone. Yes. You're going to have one that you do in two minute. Yes. You know, nobody's going to go. You don't need to go 22 personnel and 10, per, you know, or 22 personnel in two minute unless you're trying to run the clock out. Um. Sure. So those things kind of correspond with where you are in the field. My whole thing is when I looked it down a distance too early, I came up with what I call these boutique game plans where it's like, man, my second and 10 calls are going to be lit this game. Like who gives a shit? Like (laughs) it became too fractured and too, like it became too chaotic. And so what we do is we say, okay, they can do two things. They can run the ball or they can throw the ball and you can, or you have, so what I put things in the bucket. So I have base call zone pressure, man pressures. And then within that, I'm going to have my base calls that are 50, 50, like takes care of everything. I'm going to have my stopper calls. Like they're running power. How are we going to stop that? And I try to construct pressures that cover the most amount of ground. So, all right, they're a zone team. They're a power team, you know, like what can I do to cover the most ground? And then I'll have very specific like, hey, I, it's third and two. I think they're going to run power. Here's my stopper call to really overplay this play. And then I'm going to have my, I think they're going to throw the ball. So from there, I mean, the down and distance kind of takes care of itself. I mean, there's only a few down and distances where you don't know where you get. Third and 12, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get screen and draw or you're going to get some sort of passing game. You're not going to get zone read. Yeah. Conversely, if it's third and two, so – we kind of take this net approach of trying to take the whole uh, personnel grouping together and then we'll kind of slice it off and say, okay, well, 
you know, and then, then on Tuesday nights when I'm going into Wednesday practice where I'm going to do third down, that's when I'll have my specialty third down calls. Because third down, or Wednesday for us is red zone, goal line, and third down. Those are we're going to get those real uh, specific calls. And okay. then, so Monday for me is usually the main personnel group or two. The Tuesday is going to be a review with pressures. And then if the team has a third personnel group, we'll work on that. And then Wednesday, I'm going to get in the, the, the real situations. And so, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. Okay. Well, that sounds- because when I break down a team down a distance or like the overview, I take out red zone, I take out two minute, four minute. Um, and so that's pretty much holistic. And you could tell, I mean, with high school football, you can tell what's going to be on third down. How? So now from there, what I'll do is I'll do personnel, you know, formation. And then I have some things and I'm putting a plug in here. I just did like a two hour thing for huddle in terms of how to game plan, like the whole thing. And I go into all the columns, but what I do is I make a couple columns that I think would really be helpful for defensive coordinators. One is I call it alt personnel. And so it's, it stands for alternative personnel. So it's, if everybody lined up like they should in their normal position, what would the personnel group be? So where is this helpful? You're playing an 11 personnel team that flexes out the tight end, right? Well, when they line up in two by two, for me, that would be alternative personnel, real personnel is 11. There's, you know, one back, one tight end, three receivers, but it's a 10 personnel formation. Why does that matter when I make hit charts? So I have put all my two group, all my two by twos together, group all my three by ones together, um, you know, do, do all this stuff. And then, um, and I just make hit charts and then I'll go by formation. And I don't do like top 10 formations. I, I group them together. Cause when you're making a hit chart, there's two reasons you make a hit chart. One is to prepare your players. So they know what formations they are going to see. But the second one is so you can game plan. Well, how the hell are you going to game plan if you've got your gun week three by one next to gun strong two by two next to 12 personnel, you know, double tights a pair, and then a pair of tight ends on the same side. Like that's not helping you game plan. You need to group everything together by shells. And because we're a split safety team or split field coverage team, we just look at pieces. Like, what are we going to do to the, to the field or the read side? What are we going to do the away side based on the surfaces? So I need to put all those together. Why is a team in 10 personnel and two by two, but then they're going 11 personnel two by two when they have the tight end. And why do they have that tight end? And why are they in this? Is it so we can block and they throw, you know, is he to the field and they're throwing perimeter screen to the field so we can go block the corner. If he's to the boundary, why is he to the boundary? You know what I mean? And so in those hit charts, that's where the game planning for me takes place. Okay. Now, I have to ask this. I don't know if I asked you this before, but okay. as a defensive coordinator, would you rather see a team in one formation run multiple plays or multiple formations and only run one play? Um, I feel like that deep in, in hell was like this, this stupid ass question. <laughs> no, it's just one of those things that it depends on like, it depends what you're seeing and it depends what you're, Going against, I mean, for me, that's a really good question. This hey, proves that this, I was not given these ahead of time. This no, no, real. this is, listen, Any, I like, tell everybody this. We have that preset questions that we're going to talk about, you know, game plan and stuff yeah. like that. But when you say something and it tickles my brain, yeah, I have to ask. And you just said that about grouping and personnel. So that made me think about the yeah. one or the many because you know in in offensive football that's besides spread besides air raid and wing t slugging and out then you have another camp of one formation a lot yeah. of plays or a lot of formations in one play here's what i'll say and i'm gonna cop out a little bit it depends on how smart my kids are if i got smart kids i want to see a bunch of formations with only one or two plays out of them because now i can overplay what okay so can i ask a qualifying question yes you can do these bunch of different formations come out of the same personnel group or different personnel groups? Uh, let's say same personnel group. Okay. Now I don't, I don't like that. I, I'd rather see, I'd rather see a bunch of different uh, 
uh, plays out of one formation. Now, if you're doing it personnel groups, like we've played some teams, I won't tell, I won't name names. I got gotcha. you. They run eight different personnel groups. Twelve personnel is going to be uh, here's a team we played. Twelve personnel is going to be tight end on each side, so ace, and then we're going to run dive, and then or they're going to go tight end on each side with, with two receivers on the same side, and then we're going to run stretch. Now I package my call doubles Indian. So doubles two G's to take away the dives slash trips field, whatever my coverage is. Now I can overplay the shit out of calls because I have the personnel groups. I can drill down um, and I can double call my fronts and my coverages are already built into double call. You know, why two? and it's not going to be anything to you guys, but why two Bronco flip solo I've taken care of all the plays that you run on that personnel group. Now, I will say this, it depends. Now, if they're in a bunch of different formations and if they're only in one personnel group, it, it depends on their skill too. Because like, all right, if you're seeing it, we, and we've seen this before, we saw a team that was, and this is like 2008, we saw a team that was 21 personnel inside and outside zone and they'd go out on the air raid. Well, their H was Billy Necro with a cage face mask. And, well, I ain't scared of that as a slot receiver. You know what I mean? So it depends like, you know, Lou Holtz used to do that stuff. Well, if the fullback was the dude, like one of those Georgia Tech fullbacks that could get vertical, okay, now that, that creates problems. But if he he can't run, then then it's laughable. If it's me out there in the slot, you're just going to be like, go I'm ahead. worried. We're calling one double Mackey <laughs> getting after his ass. All right. Well, we've got some questions in chat. And, again, coaches, thank you so much for being here. If this is the first time, this is my channel. I'm Coach Ron Mackey. I do a lot of football stuff. Just hit that subscribe button and the bell notification somewhere over there. This brilliant defensive-minded coach right here is Coach uh, Vass. He has make defense great again. He uh, deep dives. I mean, I, if you just joined us, when he was spitting off all of those things, it was like listening to another language right there, the, the nine, the six, the three. That I was like, oh, my goodness. That is amazing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put his stuff in the chat, his Twitter. He's got – yeah, you have some some videos on Coach Tube. My favorite, uh, from an offensive perspective, is your defending RPOs because I want to know what you're doing to stop yeah. me, so then I can turn around and laugh when it doesn't work. That's kind of what I do in the off season. I see what the defensive guys are doing, and then also his uh, Patreon. Every time I see P Patreon, I want to say Patron because I'm a, I'm I'm me dumb. Too. I'm dumb. Well, so as as an, a creator, a content creator we patreon internally refers to the customers as patrons and i always want to say patrons That's, i want to say <laughs> all, the that time. all the time so yeah all the time all right so we I, got know, some good questions though I, Go the ahead. patreon stuff is is and i and i'm not trying to be you know johnny salesman or whatever and i appreciate the plug but the cool thing for me is there's stuff that i can't just put out there there's things i can i can't just talk about um, because the hookup, re man. relationships yeah. that I have. And so what's cool about it is we like, I, and, and I'm taking stuff from the gaming world. So I got the idea to do the Patreon originally from a guy that does FIFA, F uh, like FIFA tips and tricks and stuff. And then the discord, I, I mean, that's like a gaming thing. I got that idea from my other buddy who's big in the FIFA world. And so we have this like chat. And if you sign up for the, I think it's bronze and higher, you get access to the discord. And so you have these coaches that are, you know, have thought that this, this Patreon is worth spending money on. And so they're invested, you're invested in it. And so we have a little community. It's like 30 guys, we have 70 patrons so far. And I think half of them are in the discord. And then half of those guys are at more active. And I've learned stuff. There's great conversations going on. And because it's behind a wall where you can, not everybody can get in, people are sharing more information. People are, you know, they're more likely to talk about stuff because they don't have the prying eyes of their opponents on there. And you can really hit some really neat conversations. And it's, I don't know, I, I like it. Um, I like providing content. Like, you know, for me, hosting the podcast like you know the podcast is free anybody can listen if you want the bonus pot if you just want the bonus podcast it's five bucks a month 
So it's basically a dollar per podcast. You get 10 to 15 minutes. Last week, we had Ryan Osborne on from UT Martin, formerly Florida and Mississippi State GA. We would talk for 40 minutes. That's a dollar a week. And then it's like, well, if you want, like one of the silver packages is, I think it's 25 a month, but you get, like when I did the Nate Woody podcast, I drew 60 diagrams of his defense of all the calls that he talked about. And so it's it's like, a lot you kind of build and, it, and then I have a package where you have access to my huddle. Stuff I can't, like I have a coach fast football huddle account that I can't just like put on Twitter or I'll get DMC a to the neck. You know, and so it's cool because I get to share stuff for guys that really want to, you know, learn and dig deep into some stuff. And it's just been, it's been a cool experience. And I love those guys on there. Like they're. Well, you got one in the chat. Terrence Gant says the Patron, the Patron. See, I just did it. (laughs) Just did it. The Patreon is worth the money. Gold package, best money I've spent. Thank you. Yeah, there's, I mean, we have 300 and uh, 30 hours of video and I've only had it for a couple months. I'm adding stuff every day. Like you're a digital whore. That's what you are. So I'm going to plug this. I'm putting up six, I think it's 70 videos of Aranda's teach tape stuff when he was at Wisconsin, like his teaching, the cutups he used to teach his stuff. And you're not going to find that anywhere. No, you're not. No. Unless you go to Baylor. I don't even know if he's got that stuff there. You know, he, well, I, I, I should shut up. I'm gonna <laughs> shut right. up before I get in trouble. We've got some questions in the chat right now. One is uh, from Alan. I'm the DC at our high school. In our league, we face wing T, spread, double wing, tight monster formations. Based on offensive schemes, I either teach backfield reads or GT pulls. I thought that was a question. That was just more of a statement. I'm not a professional like you, Vass, so please don't judge me. Um, we've got another one from Noah. Here's one. He wants to know, Do you, while you're game planning, are you studying OL's hand and foot placement? Like if the left tackle's foot is in a run or if it's in a pass set, like, do you study that? Our D line guys will look at that stuff. Okay. And that Uh, leads into, into another one. Do you segment who's doing what on game planning? Like, Hey, D lineman, you're doing. So how how do you do that? What was your, it depends on their game day responsibilities and what they do like related to the side of the ball or the side of the ball. Sorry. the, The, the position they're working with. So, um, one of my assistants, funny, one of my assistants just responded uh, with a joke because I, in the league we were in, I would have them look at, you know, first and 10 after a run, after a pass, after an explosive run, after an explosive pass, after a penalty. What would they do? First and 10 within a series. And then second and seven to nine. And then second and 10 plus. What do you do after a run, after a pass, after a penalty? And he That's was just joking because every week it would be, they're going to run the ball coach because <laughs> of the league we were in. So uh, third and long, like I remember we were in a game, just kind of going back to one of your questions, but like we were playing in a section final and it was third and 11. And one of my guys called in and said, Hey, let's run a TE game, ET to one side, T to the other. I'm like, no, he goes, why? And I said, cause they're probably going to run speed option. And sure shit, they ran speed option. I mean, that's the kind of stuff we were seeing, but um, back to the thing about delegating. So for example, the number one thing for me, and this is just me, I know I'm not, I know everybody's different and everybody has a different philosophy with it, but the number one thing for me, even above down a distance is personnel. Um, so I find the guy I trust the most, like the guy, uh, the, the, the crown jewel of the staff and the most detail oriented guy is gonna be my personnel guy. Um, and when I was at Sarah, I had a guy named Lyndon McGee. And so he, I don't really give a shit what position it is, but he needed, to, I, the guy I trust the most needed to be the personnel guy. And that was Lyndon. He coached safeties, I coached corners. And then um, we would get together and then segment off because sometimes we play, you know, an I team where that strong safety was going to be more like a Sam. So he would take them and I'd take the back or whatever. So that's where my starting point when I started signing. And then it's pretty intuitive from there. So the DN, if I got two D line coaches, the DN coach will work protections. Uh, I think we have 59 columns that we tag. We don't tag every column every week. Good God. I was about to say 59. I mean, but some of them we do, um, uh, you know, the, the, whoever's the DB coach, I've always been a DB coach. So whoever's not me does the routes where they break 
um, read side and away side routes. And a lot of stuff is just, you go back at the end and you just crystallize the data. Um, what do you mean by that? So maybe that's not the best word, uh, um, use of words. So for example, I do, I do all the hard stuff, formation, motion, play, you know, that stuff. And so we're, we tag routes like Patterson where it's read side and away side. And so if it's on the same side, so let's say it's curl flat, you're getting, you're getting curl flat. And then on the other side, you're getting uh, China or smash. So we go curl hyphen flat. So that means we're on the read side. And then when you get the slash that delineates, it's known we're now on the weak side, China. So at the end, when I'm done with the play, the DB coach will sort it and then he'll put read side routes, curl flat, away side routes, China. So for us, read side is strong passing strength, away side is weak, weak passing strength. And the reason we do that is because when I'm running reports and I'm doing half line <laughs> pass, which is the greatest drill in yes, all football. Is. Yes, it is. Um, I can run a report formation shell. And this goes back to the formation shell I was telling you about before. We also okay. do one with formation groupings, like just, you know, two by two, three by one, two by zero nub, or, you know, two by one nub, all that stuff. So I can run a report, formation shells, read side routes, away side routes. So that's the easiest way to plan for practice. You just run a report and say, okay, because, you know, not everybody mirrors their routes and you're only going to get certain routes. Like we don't get slot fade into the boundary because it's hard in high school because the houses are so wide. There's not much room. And the whole reason you run a slot fade is to gain room, right? Yeah. Well, it don't make shit of sense to do it to the boundary. So we don't work slot, but, but again, it's instead of guessing, you can run those reports. And so, but at the end, we, we take the data and then we can just siphon it off for different purposes. Because if you don't do that, deciding what you're going to do, like break it all apart, how do you quickly do that? And for practice planning, you got to sit there and look through everything. What routes are they throwing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he'll do the position because I don't care about jersey number. I care about the position uh, on the field. Unless it's a complete stud, then we'll double him. But, you know, what position caught the ball? What route and where was the ball caught at? Or where was the, where was it, where did it land? Like, where was it supposed to be caught at? So we can get a good feel, like, where they throw their fades. You know, we see guys that throw it in the honey, the honey hole or whatever people call it. You are the uh, second person that, that has called it the honey hole. I have never ho- heard it called the honey hole. That just. I don't know. It sounds. That sounds it sounds. I, don't like it. <laughs> I can see myself as a middle-aged white guy in practice yelling, throw it into the honey hole. <laughs> Put that ball in the honey hole. <laughs> I will be getting papers so yes, fast. CPS is out there arresting you. <laughs> uh, but, or, you know, are they throwing it at 30 or is it a guy, you know, you playing DJ Ugalele from Bosco who's throwing it like 45 yards because he's got a receiver who runs a four, three that can get under it, but, you know? So, but that way we can, you know, you take the data and you're able to, you know, you block it and then you, you can slice it off to do different things. Um, and it just makes your world easier during the week because you can run those reports it doesn't take me 25 minutes like what do they run out of two by two i have data that can just pull it up easier takes the guesswork out of it too i like that all right that's a good good answer now we have another one couple ones let's say you only have one day in one hour to practice defense well how would you practice that how would you structure that answer that question i mean i can i can i give some advice to, to whoever asked that Yes. Never fun. ask a coach anything that they've never done before. Like I, I, I know a respectable guy. I, I won't say who it is, but I called him about the double wing years ago, and he gave me, "Oh, I do this, I do that." And I should have, I should have picked up on it because it was like a the waves, and I would do this, I would do that, and then in the end he goes, "But I've never played the double wing, so I don't know." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> My advice to you is find somebody who is in that similar situation who's been successful because I would don't listen to me. I don't, 
I couldn't function like that. I would not coach before I would be able to be in that situation. I just, I mean, if I only had an, I was seeing an hour a week. It says, right. Coach Flynn asked, what would you, what would your practice structure be if you only practice defense one day per week for 60 minutes? Thanks. Uh, I would formation adjust. I would spend half my time adjust just to get lined up. Mm -hmm. And I would, um, half line. I do half line. Op it's, it's an old TCU drill called half line option, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be just option. It'd be half line pass with perimeter runs with the DBs and the safeties. And then I would have middle drill with the the D lineman and the two linebackers, and I would do as much group work as possible. Correct the individual stuff as you go. But again, I please coach with Coach Flynn. Yeah. Please take that with a grain of salt. I, because I, I mean, I've never, I've only one year did I coach my first year coaching. We did not platoon. Otherwise, I've been fully platoon or I've been in college. Okay. Well, he, here's another one. Uh, coach Allen wants to know what's your short, like, Break down real quick. You don't have to go dive deep into it. What's your practice schedule look like, though? Like how many blocks? Uh, what are the, what well, are the... When I was at Sarah, I controlled the practices. I did all the practice planning. So I got <laughs> to do whatever I wanted, which was nice. Uh, when I got to Clovis, we practiced like two and a half hours a day. So my whole thing is when I plan practice, I reverse engineer everything. How much team time do we want? And then I work backwards. Okay, well, if we're not covering a team, how much group time do we need? And then work towards individual. So okay, I plan so and I recommend people planning in reverse. Individual, this drives me crazy. This is a pet peeve of mine. Coaches, hey, do you have any linebacker drills? Yeah, I've got tons of linebacker drills. What, what scheme do you run? Well, it doesn't matter. It matters. Like individual... <laughs> is there to support the scheme that you run. So like, I'm not going, I'm going to plan individuals last because I'm trying, I'm trying to support what we're going to do. If I'm going to run a lot of blitzes that day, I'm not going to have the linebackers pass dropping an individual. True. Or maybe you argue that if you don't have a lot of time, that's when you would do it. Okay. We'll cover pass drops and individual because we don't have a lot of time because we'll work our blitzes in group. So you could look at it two different ways, but that when I play in practice, that's how I go. And, and it varied because, you know, we were at Sarah, we were fighting the sun because we didn't have lights. And so our practice in August looked very different than our, you know, the week of the state championship when we had to be done at 450. Um, but usually we do 20 to 30 minutes a team in season. Monday is 20 minutes a team. Tuesday and Wednesday is 20 minutes or 30 minutes a team. We usually do some sort of group period. I do not believe in doing seven on seven and nine on seven with your team time. Like if I got the offense for 30 minutes, I'm using all 11 guys. To do um, what? We self-scout all of our seven on and nine on, unless it's early in camp. But once the season starts, we're not doing nine on seven as a, as a team period. Can I tell you something? Sure. Why? Okay. I'm not tell you something. Ask you something. Why do defenses like that? I can't effing stand it. What? We're doing because to me, nine on seven. Why would I? Why would I run that? Why would you run nine on seven? Yeah. Like if I'm the offensive coach, I'm not running. So for us, it would be like inside, and there would be eight people on defense with our five. And it's like, I would not run the ball in this situation. What, why? Well, I mean, we would be six. Up. So we would do is we would go, if we were seeing, let's just say it's 10 personnel. We would go the front six. Mm -hmm. Because if we're in one high, we're usually in man. So those guys are in man. They're not, I don't want them in there anyway. Or we'd have them stand there and stare at their receivers. But honestly, to be one of, this is kind of messed up, but. The reason we segment stuff off is so I can be there. Wait, that's, that's smart. Because if I can't, like, if we need to work on defending the run, I don't want to be in 11 on 11. Like early in camp when you're trying to fit stuff, uh -huh. I take, because we don't do, technic, uh, typically we didn't do like nine on seven and one on ones at the same time by receiver DB. We would okay. do nine on seven and then 
defeating blocks and then one-on-ones the line would be doing like something else because I'm a DB coach. So if you, we went nine on seven and wide receiver DB at the same time, I'd be expected to be wide receiver DB. Yeah. Well, then I can't ever work with the front six. Yeah. That's not a winning business model. So a lot of it, <laughs> I do those segments so I can get my eyes there. Okay. That's smart. Um, got a question. Which offensive system is the biggest pain in your glorious booty? They didn't say glorious booty. They said pain in the rear. I just wanted to add those. Adjectives. Uh, 2013, we played at St. Ignatius and they ran the Boise shit. The shifts and motions and everything shifts, like that. Motions, motion back and trade stuff. No, no huddle stuff doesn't bother me. Has it ever, did it ever bother you? No. I mean, people have been successful versus us, but it's, I'm never like, Oh my God, not the 10 personnel stuff. Like why not? I grew up on. So you were just in it. You were like Bane. You I mean, I've, up always, in the darkness. I've, been, I've been on the other side of an air raid based passing game my entire career. Except for my one year at Millsaps, we were a 21, 12 personnel West coast team. Every other team I've ever coached on was based out of 10 personnel. Okay. So let me flip the switch on you. You get a head coaching job. I know you're going to be a DC. You're going to do the four two five TCU stuff because that's your baby. What are you running on offense? What do I got? Oh, whatever you want. This this isn't uh, because uh, and let me let me clarify why I'm asking in that. I always find that see for me if I when I become a head coach I'm going to run some some passing thing but defensively I'm going to be an odd front four eye one high. I'm a mug the wide receivers. That's just what I don't like to see. Mm-hmm. So I'm um, asking you as a defensive coordinator, like what would you run offensively? Because usually it's something you don't like to game plan for. So you're going to run it when you have. I mean, if we're talking fan, I mean, in real life, I would find the best offensive coach I could find and then build it, the system around what he felt comfortable with. If we're talking like fantasy land. Yeah, this is, this is, you can wave a magic play. wand. Um, I mean, I like what we did, Sarah which was we ran spread mm-hmm. 10 and 11 personnel kind of the offense you see today. And we're 20% of our offense would be the double wing. Why? Uh, would you say why? Yes. Because I believe the double wing gives you a physicality that you can't get in the spread. And I'm just being honest. And I know there might be a bunch of coaches on here. Like, oh, that's bullshit. Those are fighting words, sir. Well, I mean, we, we <laughs> were in a state championship game four out of our five O linemen were out. Um, Our quarterback was, we didn't know this at the time, but was like broken ribs, concussed. He was out temporarily, but he passed, somehow passed the concussion test. But then afterwards, NFL model, I hear you. Half the shit. And we jump in the double wing. First of all, it makes defense coordinators freak out. And I'm not talking about the Tim Murphy shit. I love Tim, great coach, but there's something about double tight, double wing, somebody being under center that freaks out coaches. And we get in, we get in that. It's 14-14 right after halftime in the state championship game. It's the number one offense in the country. We run Raider power right. The right guard blocks down and completely whiffs. The left guard pulls around and misses his guy, and we get nine yards. And this team did not know how to defend it. We ended up scoring 24 unanswered points. And it was funny because the old double wing guy, head coach, they used to run the flex bone in the double wing. Um and he was like, we should throw the ball. And Lo, the offensive coordinator, who's now at Bosco, who's the spread guy, is like, no, we need to stay in Raider. And we just jammed the football up their ass to the tune of 24 unanswered points. Why, um, why is that so difficult? Like, were y'all just better than them? No. I, I mean, Vegas, I'm, literally Vegas had odds in the game. We were 4.00 eyes. I didn't think I was panting. And I, I read an article, if you guys are interested in it, if you go to my website, coachfast.com, you go to blogs or articles. There's a article I wrote on the game. And I basically, it's just me freaking out all week and somehow pulling it out of my ass to win the game. We did everything you're not supposed to do, like switch defenses. I tried to invent a tight front version of the tight front. It was, it was, it could have easily been the dumbest thing and backfired and been the dumbest thing of all time. But here's what, here's why I love the double wing. We treat it like special teams. So we only practice it for 15 minutes a week, 15 minutes a day, really 20. And it would get down to 10 and the whole team would come together. So if you're in high school and you've got platoons, it was a way for you to get your best 11 guys in the field. 
best 11 guys at those positions. It got everybody together, you know, and it just gave an F you mentality that you don't necessarily get as much, you know, our head coach, Patrick Walsh was a legend at De La Salle high school, the best high school football program ever, in my opinion. And, you know, they're a split veer team teaching the flippers yep. and stuff. And so it just gets you guys foot to foot nasty. It just instills a toughness that I, I we didn't get when I've coached on spread teams that didn't run that stuff. It's just natural. I mean, you're foot to foot and you're trying to just ear hole people off the ball and, it's just a, it, and, and it gets defensive guys and offensive guys excited. It gets the defense more invested in the offense. Um, and it's just a pain in the ass for coaches to defend because now you're worried about all of our Baylor uh, air raid stuff and running power read bash, all this crazy stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're going fast. And then all of a sudden, you know, 900 pounds of Polynesian guys come out on one side of the line and we just go F you man. And we're foot to foot and we're just teeing off on fools. All right. So how many plays did you have in that wing T package or that double wing? Double wing. We yeah. ran power, power wide. So we would seal down with the wing and kick the, uh, the force guy. We ran counter. We ran Navy. So it was a sweep. Then we ran rocket and we had a couple play actions. We had a boot. We had uh, church, which was scissors, Iglesia. Um, <laughs> we had uh, and a couple. We'd have some play action pass, and sometimes we would have it like it being on the gun, and we'd run some unbalanced stuff. Like our one of our quarterbacks literally couldn't take a snap from under center, no matter how much we tried. And so we did it on the gun, but it's just not the same, man. It's not this. There's something about that offense that freaks people out, at least out in the West Coast. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset. And I know there's people that are probably like, yeah, bullshit, whatever. I'm just telling you, this is my experience. Um, and I have had six, I mean, we shut out Sarah when I was at St. Francis. That's how I got the job. And I still was like, I never want to see that stuff ever again. Okay. So I'm just thinking of it this way. Double wing, please, please part coaches. Uh, forgive my ignorance. It's essentially 12 personnel. So if we had two tight ends, two yeah. flex, I'm, 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 and shotgun and running back, right? You just no, bring them in. Like, so what? You bring it in. You bring the, the wide receivers in. They're wings now. The quarterback goes under center, and you still have a running back in the back, right? A fullback who's about a yard behind. They call it the sniffer because they say the guy's butt sniffing. Okay. And so but sometimes six-inch splits. All right. So then if, if – what would you call against – you called it ace, right? Normal shotgun ace. Yeah, like Two tight ends. Yeah, there's double tights, double what would you call in that formation? If you were just playing a normal spread team that came out in two tights, two two wide receivers out, and then uh do? running. Say what? What do they do? Doesn't matter. Just they just line up in this. I know that's different. Let's say they just run the ball. I can't answer. I mean, everything we do is based on what they do. I don't have a standard way to line up this stuff. Uh let's say they run power. Uh one back power? One back power. Try to run an over front with the three technique to away from the back. That's okay. Top my head. No, that's fine. Now, what would you do if they just condensed everything in and they still ran the, the power? Would you call a different oh, yeah. front? Why? Because you have, you have four vertical threats and you have 10 gaps. And what happens is in superpower, when you're running power, mm -hmm. double wing, they pull the guard. And so they start off, it's five and five. You got five gaps to each side. Yeah. So center guard, guard tackle, tackle tight end, out tackle wing or tight end wing, and then outside the wing. Mm -hmm. You have five and five. Okay. So now the fullback goes this way. He creates six gaps over here. So now it's six and five. Okay. Guard pulls. Now it's seven and four. Tackle pulls. Now it's eight and three. Quarterback spins and leads up. Now you got nine guys to this side and two to the other. And now you on defense have to have enough people on the line of scrimmage to handle off tackle running, but have enough guys off the ball to be able to match the numbers. And they don't give a shit that like three yards, three and a half, three and a third or 3.3 uh, yards of carry. They're two and a half yards of carry. They will go for it every fourth down. And they just wear on you because they're foot to foot. Mm -hmm. You can't play a normal, like you can't, there's no post and drive. Hold on a second. Um, 
there's no post and drive. So the guard's going to try and scramble you, and then the tackle's going to ear hold you. So you can't – there's no splitting a double team. Okay. And it changes everything about geometric football that you, like we played the first time we played it, we were, you know, had a safety four by four coming off the edge. Uh-huh. We were forcing the ball too fast. So we would force it and the thing would just tunnel up and go for a mile. And then, so we had to move them tighter and force the ball inside, but from inside out. So basically think the back had the edge inside out, inside out, inside out, and then set the edge. It's, it's a, it forces it's the opposite of the big split stuff but it's the same in the sense that you have to throw everything you know about geometry in football and like what you learn in patterns out the window okay and and it may seem like i was coming off like a condescending asshole oh. it wasn't oh. I, honest to god i have not i've studied the wing tee the flex bone all of that stuff the fly sweep series or the fly offense all of that we really haven't dived into the double wing so coaches if you could uh, put your best stuff in there so i can go in and i can uh, research it because i i am it's piqued my curiosity and that doesn't mean i'm going to run it then i mean i still love to throw the ball but like one of uh coach mars always said you know the coach's playbook is like this and then the kids playbook is like this i want to know everything yeah there is and not that so well the great thing about the double wing is it's really easy everybody blocks down like we didn't really block fronts everybody blocks down so you're creating a wall you're kicking out and, and the cool part about it is because it's an offshoot of what you're doing, you can, you have, we had auditions, like we had tryouts. Who wants to be the fullback? Shit. When I was at Sarah, one guy was a Every linebacker. Summer. One guy was, we would put um, our three technique in the night. We had a three technique we're 99 and he was the fullback. One year it was a D end. One year it was a kid that was like, uh, uh, cause on, we're a 10 personnel team. Mm-hmm. But all the linebacker type bodies go to that defense. And that's also why I love to spread in the platoon because it's easy to share running backs. I mean, we had a, a player of the year in the conference and they practiced offense 15 minutes a day in individual. And then during teams, they would go to offense, teach the protections, teach the runs, and he'd go and play safety with me. And I'd structure the practice where, you know, 15 minutes, the first 15 would be some sort of circuits or something where if he missed takeaway circuit, it wasn't the end of the world. And Steve and I did a really good job of planning practices to share certain guys. Some years it was four guys, some years it was one guy, some years it was no guys we could share. And um, so all those linebacker types, DN types are all going to defense. So it makes your defense better too. Okay. And then you just got to split the athletes. Like, you know, if you have enough athletes, who's going to play corner, who's going to play receiver t- kind of a deal. But I just, I, I love the offense. It's simple. It gives you an F you mentality of we're, you know, we're getting two yards running Raider power, right? As we called it, Sarah Raider. And I don't give a shit what you line up in. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's hard to do in today's game because so much, and, and don't get me wrong. Like I love the spread. I would run this some version of the spread and I would not hang my hat on the double wing, but I think that offense has evolved and it's gotten better. Obviously you can see all the points that are scored, but there's something to be said so much offense is if then like the gift route, well, if he's not there, we're going to do this. And then we'll do this if he's not there. And then if they respond this way, it's like F you were running the ball down your throat. And I'm not saying you have to plan your whole, like, that's not your whole game plan. That's not everything you're going to do. But that element of that, of just saying, screw you, we're running power right, stop us. Um, I kind of miss that. That's what's scary. Okay. You know, because today's game, it's more like, oh, you're going to go here where we're going to do this. You know, we're going to we're going to throw the speed out if you bail and and if then, and I feel like I have a shot. I can try to trick some people and then trap coverages and line up off and trap or roll post snap. Like, I feel like I got, I I can play the the game with the OC or the quarterback. When you line up in the double wing and you say F you were running power, right. And you, they do it. That's demoralizing. Okay. So I know we've talked about the double wing more. Than no, 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 no. You've got my mind kind of spinning yeah. right now. And thank you because in the Corona lockdown, you know, as coaches, we just go down rabbit holes. Yeah. That, that's all we do now. And uh, I'll give you a little, if you're really interested in this stuff. I am. I am. I'll give you a 
give you a whole list of stuff to check yes, out. Yes, please do, because I'm going to do that. All right, we have some more questions. Uh, Coach and we Flynn can go came... longer, Ron. If you want to go longer, it's, it's no big deal. I'm, we're, I'm... we're wrapping up just real quick. Uh, Coach Flynn wanted to say you gave him a nice nugget about the, the defensive stuff one hour. So thank you very much about that. Um, another coach, when you condense everything, then you have more than one back. Okay, talking about the uh, – Duke Kingsbury's here. My favorite name ever. Who? Uh, Duke Kingsbury. He's a coach in Southern California. I did a Periscope. I think it was, I did the live stream for my mom in uh-huh. October, September, where I did, I don't know if you remember, I did like this nine hour thing. Yes, yes, you did. Country to raise money for my mom's treatment. And this guy came in and he was asking some questions or saying something. His name was Duke Kingsbury. And I just became obsessed. I'm like, that is the greatest name ever. Yeah. So whenever he pops in, hey, what's up, dude? Whenever he pops in, I get really excited. All right. And you can't <laughs> what do you say about the quarterback? The quarterback can't the see what's in his eyes. The quarterback can't see what's here in his eyes. All right. Well, I that's it, man. I know I don't want to keep you long. You're you're a busy, busy man. Thank you so much for being here. It's it's I love talking ball with you, man. We should do this more often. Yes, we should. We really no should. FA, uh, it doesn't eat up too much practice time. If you start in the summer, you can get it in 20 minutes. Um, you can do it 20 minutes a day and then shrink it down to 10 minutes by the end of the season and get it done. Okay. Yes, with undersized line. This is the reason why I asked you, um, I've got a new OC spot. Coach is going to let me run, run my stuff, like mm-hmm. hands off run my stuff, but he wants another package kind of like short yardage type package under center. Mm-hmm. I, what I like is I kind of like the wing T type of speed series you know, the speed sweep and, and things that go off of that. Cause I just, I just like that a lot. But what you said about the double wing kind of tickled my brain a little bit, how you can get both the offense and like the best 11 on there under center. And you're a very smart guy. And if that gives you problems, if that kind of keeps you up at night, it, it, it's got me thinking now. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. And I will say this. I said the double wing because I was in an offense that ran it for five years. Uh If I hadn't seen the double wing, I would call Rick Darlington at Popka and I would learn the single wing because you can get away with it. The same doing the same stuff that we did in the double wing. The thing that's unsettling about it's six, one way, half dozen, the other, the thing that's unsettling about the double wing is they're balanced. They're really not because you're going to motion somebody and they, most people put their best runner away from the best tight end. So you can overplay one side and say, okay, you're going to run over there because most double wing teams flip their line. Okay. They all at most a lot do the single wing though. You can do a bunch of misdirections. So like the one thing about the double wing is the misdirection is not great because you're going to run dipsy do that. Some people actually call it dipsy do <laughs> she not. I mean, you're going to run counter back to the wing. Um, but the single wing, you can run like the, the, the false pull series. You know, there's, there's more fun stuff you could do out of it. Okay, so if you're if starting I, from scratch, that is the offense I would research. Okay. Do you have any stuff on that? It, God, that, yeah, I swear starting, to God, man, yeah. if you turn me into a running coach, I'm going to come all the way down to Florida and I'm going to, pop you right in the left ear you can hang out we can i'll draw it up for you <laughs> no rick darlington who was at apopka high school is an enterprise if you go in the glazier i don't know if you have glazier shout I out to glazier. uh he's got a bunch of stuff there you can reach out to him he, he I has need to get him on the podcast what's that i need to get him on the podcast the showcase yeah, we had corona palooza for offense and he, he did a whole trick play thing um but all of his stuff is on the glazier vault you can check okay. out it's that is the so that that and the Boise style stuff is tied. We played a team who was not very good, and I feel bad saying it, but they weren't. We had running clocked them at halftime, and it was bad so bad that the coach was like asking for it at halftime, like please God put your twos in. Um, but I have never had a meltdown like I had a meltdown that week, especially because the four four does not deal well with the single wing. You have to adjust it because uh-huh. uh, it's unbalanced. Um, and I couldn't figure it out and I was losing my shit. I like, and then I figured it out like Tuesday at one o'clock. I'm like, I got it. Stop drawing. (laughs) And, uh, 
we basically slid to an under, but overshifted the defense. So we, we took our we took our Sam and put him to the weak side, and then our DN became the Sam because we slid everybody over one. Okay. And I had a good plan for him. We actually played a single wing team in Clovis East, and they actually said, well, for whatever it's worth, they told one of our coaches we had the best plan, but you know they might have just been being nice. They weren't. But holy shit, like especially with the false poles. I mean, you want to talk about staying up late at night and, and doing stuff. That stuff is unbelievable. Okay. Well, I'm going to research. I'm going to research offenses. both of them. Yeah. And the cool part is if you teach double wing blocking, I mean, you're going to run power counter, either rocket toss or speed sweep. You can do those in both offenses. Okay. If you have one dude, though, that can catch a snap, the, the, the single wing is good. Okay. You can direct snap it to him. All right, well, you need to stop talking because I'm going to go to bed and just okay. jump in YouTube and, and just, like, research the hell out of the single wing and the double wing, and I'm I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm not going to be who I am because of you. you. Know, so Kyle I Hogan? You ever talked to him? No, I haven't. He Well, he's one of the smartest coaches in America. He runs a single wing at uh, his school in Missouri, so you can also talk to him. Why am I on here promoting the single wing? What is wrong with me? I don't know, dude, but thank you. You trick me. You use your special voodoo mind powers on me. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt, yeah, baby. A Jedi like, mind tricked you. You're like uh, <laughs> convincing me to like, telling offensive coaches how to screw us. <laughs> That's the good thing. is what we do, I'm man. Not a, because I'm not a DC anymore for, for now. I was like, I can say stuff like that. Like, I never would have come out and said that a year ago. There's no chance. All right, coaches. Hey, thank y'all for being here. If you haven't already, seriously, here is all of his stuff. Please support the man. He is an amazing part of this community. Coach, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it means the world to me that you would jump on and talk ball with me and the other coaches. Anytime, man, man. I appreciate you. All right. And coaches, until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun.